Boaz and Wilkins launched a long-awaited upgrade to their PX noise cancelling headphones earlier this year. The PX7 S2, as it is called, is impressive by all standards. But in a strategic marketing plot, they also announced an even more expensive follow-up, the PX8. I've been using the Boaz and Wilkins PX8 for about three weeks now, and I have a lot to share. My name is Emeko Kereke and welcome to Careful Optimist. So, with no further ado, let's get right into it. Straight out of the box, the Boaz & Wilkins PX8 is quite similar to a little sister, the PX7 S2. The box and the pouch are basically the same size, but when you go right inside, difference is glaring. In fact, at that point, the PX7 begins to feel like a knockoff of the PX8. If you thought the PX7 S2 was beautifully designed, you'd be pleasantly surprised by how much the company pushed design further with the PX8. As a result, everything about this cans screams premium. And I know I said exactly the same thing with the PX7 S2, but now I beg to differ. Yet, I have a feeling that the PX8 is not meant to be compared with the PX7 S2 or Sony XM5 and even the Sennheiser Momentum 4. If anything, it is going for the top gun in the market, such as the BNO H95, Mark Levinson 5909, and well, let's throw in that very lazy reference, the AirPods Max. Now, if we go by look and feel, these headphones are destined towards those who appreciate aesthetics as essential to the function and everyday usage of headphones. It underscores the fact that your headphones are not just some clunky tool for audio listening, but also and more so, a personal ornament that complements your identity as well as your personality. If you are one of those kinds, you will be already sold on these headphones that come at a steep price of 699 euros here in Germany. But again, there's much more, so stay with me. The ear cups are made out of precisely cut and brushed aluminium with the company's embossed textured emblem. This precision continues to the headband, which is also made of aluminium and soft leather. Not only are these headphones a delight to the eyes, but it feels pleasant and confident to the touch. The headphones come in three colors, black, beige, and then a special edition 007 James Bond in midnight blue, which you have to shell out another 100 euros for. Well, I went for the black and fun fact, I found it at a discount price of 599 euros from this German audio retail company called Hi-Fi Pro. I don't know how I got this lucky, but I think I will attribute it to the fact that there's been some fluctuations between dollars and euros lately. Anyway, check them out. The link is in the description below. Perhaps you too might get lucky. As expected, these cans are pretty comfortable. At 320 grams, it is relatively light, and this is something Boas and Wilkins have been struggling to get right. They first made a bold attempt at using carbon fiber for the headbands in the previous PX7, but my experience is that it just didn't look as sleek and intuitive as what they've been able to pull off with the PX8. Also, the clamping force is just right, at least for my head, which is somewhat on the big side. I also love that the form factor and footprint are more streamlined when worn on the head. When it comes to portability, the ear cups don't fold in, so they sit flush inside the case. The case basically mirrors that of the PX7 S2, albeit with better finishing. They will undoubtedly protect your prize gear perfectly well if you remember to use them. Now, I have a habit of wearing my headphones around my neck when transporting them when not listening to music. The PXA sits quite well on the neck, especially when the headband is fully extended. The ear cups are pretty much the same as the PS7 S2. 
okay, maybe I should just say you should go check out my review of the PS7S2, which you'll find this link up here. Because when it comes to form factor and portability, these cans are basically identical. Battery life comes in at 30 hours. Admittedly, lesser than Sennheiser M4, for instance, which is actually cheaper. But still, if you make it a habit of using these headphones in wired mode, which I can't recommend enough, then you might not even need to charge the headphones. What about features? Well, Boaz & Wilkins has stayed true and faithful to using physical buttons for controls. And that I am happy about. I'm not a huge fan of touch sensors on headphones, except lately I have had a change of heart with the Sennheiser Momentum 4. But more on that when I put out that video of the review. The ANC and transparency mode in the PS8 is okay, not great, but okay. Not as good as the Sony XM5 or even the Sennheiser Momentum, both of which cost considerably lesser than the PX8. And this is disappointing to say the least. I know Boaz and Wakens are being somewhat careful with going all in with the noise cancellation for fear of compromising sound quality. But given the headroom that the release of the PS7 S2 provides, I would have expected them to develop the ANC and ambient mode of the PX8s even further, especially given the hike in price. But instead, they left it untouched. So the ANC is good, but the ambient mode is basically unusable. When using voice assistants such as Siri and Alexa, you are out of luck because you can only do so at the expense of the ANC control. There is only one button you can customize for either ANC control or voice assistant, and that's the one on the left ear cup. This is an unfortunate limitation. I always like to have my ANC buttons handy, but it means I cannot use the voice assistant in the case of the PX8. The ANC features are bare bones. You can only toggle between ANC, ambient mode, and off. I find that the audio feedback the headphones gives off is not exactly helpful. Even after many years of using the PX8, ANC series, I still second guess which mode I turn on when I hear the beep. I think it's better to have a voice assistant for each mode rather than a beep. Now the headphones features wear sensors, but as with the PS7S2, the PX8 wear sensors is erratic and annoyingly buggy. This can be easily fixed with a firmware update, I believe. But it baffles me that Boaz and Wilkins is taking this for granted after many reviewers have pointed it out. Truth is, this feature is indispensable if one thinks of how seamlessly it works with the Sony XM series and the Sennheiser Momentum, by the way. Unfortunately, I had to switch off the feature on my PX8 because it was just getting on in the way all the time. Speaking of which, the PX8 works with the Boaz & Wilkins mobile app. The app looks sleek and well-designed. The company has also integrated a music playing feature into the app. So you can connect your Tidal, Cubos, and Deezer Premium accounts to the mobile app from where you can directly stream your music. However, I have yet to find it to be very useful in my case. Also, for some reason, I notice a slight change in sound signature when I'm playing music through the app. Is it processing the music further? Well, my guess is yes. What about you? Do you feel a difference? Let me know in the comment section. The app also comes with controlled equalization, and I say controlled because you can only adjust the bass and the treble. Boaz and Wilkins have decided they don't want you messing around with the mid frequencies, and fair enough because the default sound signature might just be all you need. They are really good, but give it a try and see how it works for you. Now, Boaz and Wilkins PX8 comes with Bluetooth 5.2 for connectivity. The connection is quite robust and steady. You can connect two devices at once and you can customize how the headphones does this in the mobile app. That said, when the headphones go into standby mode, they are challenging to get back on. So my question is, why can't these headphones seamlessly connect the moment they dictate your ears? 
Sometimes I even have to switch it off and on again so that it reconnects. And that comes in the way of seamless everyday usage. It's more of an annoyance than a deal breaker, of course. But again, you know, you have to keep this in mind. All right, let's discuss the most primary feature of this device, sound. If you've listened to sound with the PX7 S2 or better still you've watched my review, then you already know what to expect of the PX8. If the PX7 S2 is the best sounding wireless noise cancelling headphones in its price range, then the PX8 is genuinely unprecedented. The words for the sound of the PX8 are detail, clarity, balance and punch. Now, where these headphones outshine many of their peers is in the frequency response. Frequency response describes the range of frequencies or musical tones an audio component can reproduce. In this case, we are speaking specifically of the 40mm driver of the PX8. But yet again, there's much more at play. How well and balanced the headphones reproduce the nuances of sound frequencies depends not only on the tuning of the drivers but also on the materials used in making the internal chambers of the drivers and their enclosure. And this is the big selling point of the PX8. The cones of the drivers are constructed with carbon fiber as opposed to biocellulose used in the cheaper PX7 S2. This drastically improves the frequency response as well as the fast and accurate reproduction of the nuances of audio signals across frequencies. This alone makes the PX8 worth its asking price if you care about such details. The sound coming from the PX8 is unrivaled compared to the AirPods Max, Biano H95 and even the more expensive Mark Levinson 5909. As for the Sony XM5 and Sennheiser Momentum 4, any attempt at comparison will amount to a gross reduction. There's just no comparison. The sound is so present that music listening is elevated from the level of an activity to an experience. Have you ever felt the frequency of music running through your veins like blood? Well, that's no exaggeration. The sound of these headphones will wake up slumbering emotions. Now, all of this is while listening wirelessly via Bluetooth. However, as soon as you switch to wired mode using the supplied USB-C cable, you are truly in the audiophile realm. The headphones support 24-bit sound quality using its internal digital signal processing. So on wired mode, you have access to high-res audio listening. And I tell you, it's mind-blowing. The nuances of frequencies you hear are uncanny, and they are present and punchy regardless of the musical genre. You can also benefit from Aptek's adaptive wireless technology as an Android user. Unfortunately, those in the Apple ecosystem are out of luck with this. Now, I listen to many genres of music with these headphones, but I focus mainly on a genre called Afrobeats. The PX8 reminds you that this is a genre that builds on the polyrhythmic attributes of high life, hip hop, jazz, and indigenous African music. This genre of music is symbolic of the many ways cultures and places intersect with each other. Basically, it's a story of journeys through music, and the PX8 is indeed a faithful companion along those journeys. Because of how well these headphones interpret frequencies with little to no distortion, they are perfect as reference monitors. In other words, I have been using them for editing podcasts, audios or video projects such as this video that you are watching right now and even DJing. So basically it's a one size fits all headphone. 
Now, regarding phone calls, I didn't put these headphones through some rigorous phone call tests, but I often record voice notes, say on WhatsApp or on Telegram. The headphones are equipped with six microphones for phone calls and noise cancelling operations. The audio recording is surprisingly good, almost to the level of a, a podcast recording. It got me thinking of a future when everything we listen to via our mobile devices would be as pristine as podcast audio. Wouldn't that be fun? All right. Conclusion. The PX8 holds its own when it comes to sound. However, I had expected that other features besides the sound would have been improved beyond the PS7 S2, given the hefty increase in price with the PS8. So, if you are uncompromising with sound, these headphones are worth buying. However, if there is much more than sound and design for you, really want to give this a second thought. And suppose you are looking for relatively cheap headphones without compromising sound quality. In that case, you are better off with the Boas & Wakens PX7 S2 or the Sennheiser Momentum 4. So that's it for this video. If you found it informative or the least bit entertaining, consider liking it. Also, leave a comment in the comment section. I really wish that each video we make here allows a space for meaningful conversations with you, our audience watching. So the more you join the conversation, the better for us. Now, if you want to see more videos such as this, it's best to subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon. You can also follow us on our social media pages. To support the channel, consider becoming a YouTube member or join our Patreon page. Now, on that note, I wish you a wonderful day or night, depending on your time zone, and see you in the next video. Bye-bye.